And please do hit the like and subscribe button. The likes are really important because that's what pushes my videos up in their algorithm, I guess. So, yeah, please hit the like and subscribe. Okay, so my new concept for rapid air transport is called SATS, Swift Air Transport System. These are not airplanes. They don't have landing gear. They do not take off on their own power. They um, can only fly to their designated location. These are, for all intents and purposes, catapult-launched two- and four-man guided missiles that are launched into the air from a catapult aimed directly at its destination, and they simply propel themselves through the air. They are efficient, they are fast, and they are safe. All it would take is a little $40,000 engine like this to propel these things. And these places would be totally off the grid. They would be self-powered um, by solar cells. So these things would operate not only very green, um, but they would also obviously um, power themselves. And another really cool thing about this system is this could never be used in a terrorist activity where you're launching cruise missiles at targets because in order to launch, you have to have a verified landing point at another facility. They need to be locked in with each other. And once the vehicle is launched, there's just no way it can change its course. It has to go directly to its landing point. And the only adjustments made during flight are automatic to make sure it stays on course. It doesn't actually change its course at all. It heads straight towards its designated target. So what you're looking at here is a very crude representation of a um, SWAT Swift Air Transport System Skyport. Uh, nothing here is to scale. This is just to give you an idea of what an out it might look like. So they see the outer circle that would represent 600 feet in diameter. So that makes this whole site here probably around 12 to 15 acres in size. Now the black things you're seeing, these are solar panels because this place would be off grid, fully independent, operating solely on solar energy. And then at the center here, Here's your main building. This has your reception, your lobby, your offices, your flight control, your radar control. Everything happens here. And then this side is where you store your vehicles. You've got maybe 24 passenger and maybe 22 passengers here. Okay. Then this is your launch rail right here. Um, and it can be elevated from down low all the way up very high, depending on where you're going and the angle of trajectory you need. And then the silver thing on top, that's your radar. That's at the highest location on the property. And so basically, this would just rotate around until you were aimed directly at your destination point. And then the, the elevation of this would either go up or down, like I said, and it would be able to rotate 360 degrees to aim in any direction. Now, when it comes to landing, there's two methods. One, the one I had originally thought of, was to, right before it comes down to the ground, it would deploy a ram air parachute, just like a skydiver uses, and it would come in and land under that wing, uh, fully autonomous. However, I have been thinking lately that water is a much more forgiving medium to land in. And so here, the idea would be you've got a 100-foot diameter, 6-foot deep, basically it's like a swimming pool, for the vehicles to splash down and um, remove the need for landing gear, a landing strip, and um, the need for an autonomous parachute system to land you. And then once you've splashed down, then this rotates around here, like this, until it's right over you. And then it has, there's a little trolley that runs out here, and it lowers an electromagnet on a cable, picks up your craft, lifts it up a foot or two, and then it slews back around to the spot 
um, and it brings you back here to where it needs to be. So just imagine what a trip in this might be like. You arrive here um, at noon. You're scheduled to launch at two minutes after noon. They load you on board. You hit the button. In one and a half seconds, you come off of here going 300 miles an hour. And um, when you arrive at your location, you're coming in, 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 and boom, that speed brake, brake deploys and that landing device deploys to slow you down and you splash down in the water. And a trip from Portland to Bend, Oregon of about 140 miles, that'd take you about 20 minutes. I can see a day when there may be a hundred of these located around the U.S. Maybe uh, mostly it would be over in the flyover part of the country. But on a grid of maybe every 200 square miles or so, you'd have one of these. And people would be popping back and forth between cities. Um, you know, when I think about the speed of this and the, not having to go through TSA and checking your luggage and on and getting in lines, you arrive here, you take your seat, you launch. This would be the closest to like Star Trek beaming someone somewhere. The speed would be so quick. And the nice thing is with the radar of both the sending and receiving location, none of these would be launched into the air towards their destination unless radar showed a clear path with no other aircraft that this might possibly interact with. So seriously, you could make this thing so safe uh, because they're taking out the random factor. You're taking out a pilot. You're taking out an opportunity for a person to adjust and change the course that they're on. So, um, yeah, I think this could be made unbelievably safe and efficient. And to get a better idea of what a launch like this might be like, here's a jet on an aircraft carrier. One thing to realize, though, these are steam catapults, and um, electric launches would be a little bit faster. 